what a wonderful morning we have here. Mary, can you hear me? Mary, can you hear me? Mary, if you're on the line, can you hear me? Yes, please, I'm on mute. I can hear you. Okay. Don't be on mute except there is noise around you. Yeah, noise. Okay. Uh, people on the conference line, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, yes. Yes. Geneva, good morning. Ms. Roslyn, good morning. Good morning. We are reading this morning from Matthew chapter 5. I hope those of you on Ustream can see me clearly. Yes. Okay. Matthew chapter, uh, Matthew chapter 6. We are now in chapter 6. When I will be ministering about the secret of power, I'm going to show you how to use scriptures for to enforce power, to make power happen. I'm going to tell you how to do that. There, there are many weapons of dominion. Matthew 6, verse number 5. Starting in Matthew chapter 5, Jesus began to talk about rewards. Rewards. I'm going to count the many times he used that word, reward. That is a hire or a wage. Can I be honest with you about something? Every good deed you do on the earth is something good. If you did it because you honor human beings, you have great respect for them, you want to alleviate their problems. Even, I mean, I've already told you the two kinds of human beings you should help. A one-time thing you do to somebody that you don't know. Uh, uh, especially, I will advise you to only give to an organization, not to individual. Except the individual is someone you know personally. You know the individual personally. Number two. If you want to do act of charity, act of kindness to anybody, it must be somebody that you invest into that will invest back into you. It's as simple as that. Every other thing is for you to take care of you. or take care of the ministry, the church, the organization, 
the ideas that you support. It's as simple as that. I'm just being honest with you. Because it's easy for us to talk about loving everybody, all that kind of stuff. That's not how the world operates. That's not how the kingdom of God operates. There are people who are not worthy of your money and of your prayers. And you should not spend your money and your time to do those things. The reason why we charge money for the professional things I do in ministry is because this is my full-time job. That's just the way it is. And also it makes you, it makes those who seriously want it to emerge. Those who mean business with me and with the God that I serve to come out of the shadow. Because if something means a lot to you, you pay for it. Matthew 6, let's start from verse 5. Up till verse number, uh, up till verse number, I think verse number, let's see. Up till verse number 4 of Matthew 6, Jesus talks about doing, uh, doing act of love act of charity, act of caring when you care. Please, I want to stop here to ask a question. Is there somebody who bought something from a company and they ship it to me? A, a box of incense, a lot of incense, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. A lot of jasmine and other incense in it that I enjoy. I mean, if we as human beings, we want to make our bedroom, our living room, our offices to smell good with wonderful incense that this, the, the wonderful, the sweet scent lasts all day. How much more us, how much more us doing that for God? You see, what happened in Christianity is that uh, because people in the other side began to use incense and wonderful, beautiful colored uh, candles and oil. They began to burn it to call up demons. And you forgot that every beautiful things that God has made, every beautiful things that we have decided to use in the worship of God, the other side has decided to use in the worship of Lucifer and fallen angels or in the worship of local deities, witchcraft, local demons. You forgot that. Everything that is of God, for example, the Bible. Are you aware that the Psalms, the Psalms that we use to continue the prayers that David left, David and his group left on the earth. Are you aware that the same Psalms are being used by Lucifer and his own people for a different thing entirely. The same word, the same Old Testament, uh, Genesis to Deuteronomy, the same uh, Isaiah, Daniel, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, all the way to the book of Revelation. Are you aware that Lucifer and his own group also uses the same thing for a different reason altogether? Does that mean that because they are also counterfeiting it, that we should not use the word, we should abandon everything because of fear of being branded that we are worshiping Lucifer? No. Zachariah was in the temple offering incense while the people were praying. That's when Gabriel came. It doesn't mean that it was the it doesn't mean that it was the incense. The incense is the most important thing. There are little things you do that make, make the air smell better, make you feel good. Because the more you grow in age, the more you need to find things that make you focus, that make you concentrate, that make you hit the target. For me, 
beautiful sweet scented candles, wonderful aroma incense, a ringing of a bell, a drum, drumming, saxophones, a sound of a saxophone, sound of Spanish flamingo guitar with, with people clapping their bare hand, very, very important. What are the things that that what are the things that will will make you not to be moody, not to be sad? That's what you are looking for in life. The rest, the rest is banza. Because if you cannot concentrate, if you cannot focus, if you cannot hit the target, you will make no money. You'll be miserable. You'll be sick. The devil will be drinking champagne while you will be having some pain. They will be drinking champagne while you will be having some pain. And that is not fair. So you do everything in your power to stay at the top of the game. Please, if you did order that box for me, please call me and let me know. Geneva, you are used to doing such things. You are used to sneaking up on me. Is that you? Okay. Okay. Because you are used to, I'm used to getting boxes upon boxes here, and you said nothing. I know you. People of God, I, I came home from somewhere and there were boxes upon boxes in front of my in front of my of my suite. And the UPS man was just going to bring some more. He said, Edeka, the, the 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 Caucasian guy that brings my UPS boxes and mails. Edeka, I'm going to bring out some more. I said, some more? What do you mean? He said, some more. I said, okay. He said, sign, and I sign all of them. And all my winter, my winter clothes, and uh, and the mufflers, and the earpiece, and hats, loaded, and this, and that, everything for the, for the winter season. And she said nothing. <laughs> she said nothing until after, after some, then then she then i saw something that resembles something then i say it must be from you and it is it was from her mary is used to sneaking up on me if i discover that it was you you'll see and now there's rustling too she used to sneaking up on me and send me Wonderful stuff. All right. Matthew. People of God, have you noticed that? Um, did you notice that the, the, the broadcast of yesterday's morning is not there in, is not archived on, the, on, the, on, on our YouTube channel? Nobody has called me to say, where is that, where is that video? Where is that broadcast? What happened to me some years back happened to that video yesterday. <laughs> the Holy Spirit, yeah, the Holy Spirit came and said to me, you have to remove that broadcast. I said, why? He said, get rid of it. I said, what did I do wrong? He said, yes, you did something wrong. I said, whoa, 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 please correct me. And the Holy Spirit said to me, you didn't laugh, you didn't smile. You were too serious. I said, what? He said, did you remember what I told you? In 2012 and 2018, I warned you that you are my instrument of laughter and happiness. 
I I have listened to this. I have very few people on earth like you who are consecrated and anointed from heaven to be the instrument to make people laugh, smile, have happiness, have money, have prosperity. I have very few of you. And it comes from the heart. I say, whoa. Say, never do a broadcast. I don't care how serious the topic that heaven has asked you to do. I don't care how serious it is. Because there are people out there that I'm using this for. There are people who throughout the night couldn't sleep. They are moody. They have problems. I use happiness and smile and joy and prosperity. That's what I use to create things to perform miracles. I don't use sadness. I don't use misery, gloominess, death. I am a God and a spirit of life. I depend on your smile. I depend on your laughter. I depend on your joy. I don't care what time of the night or what time of the day it is that I ask you to do something for me. I want to see your smile. I want to see your laughter. I want to see your happiness because that's all I got. I said, whoa. And he said, delete it. And I went and I took it off. And I went to the original video on the computer, took it off. So it doesn't exist. See, God... God takes this very, very serious. Let me tell you. God takes your smile, your laughter, your happiness. He takes it absolutely. It's a matter of life and death. That's how it is. And this is the second, this is the second or third time I'm getting that warning. <laughs> He said, I cannot do anything with the seriousness. And that too many professional people are too serious for him. And that is why he doesn't work with them. Too many professional people. Pastors are the worst. That when he gives them a little money, he gives them a little position, they are so serious, they become so formal, You can't even find them. The Holy Ghost was telling that you mean people who call their pastors, their pastors are nowhere to be seen. They're in the office, they are not picking up the phone because they are very professional. And that his people are suffering, they are dying. Nobody is listening to them. Let's go to Matthew chapter 6. Verse number five, and when, uh, when thou prayest or when thou pray, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets. that they may be seen of men. Verily, I say unto you, they have their reward. The Bible talks about that those who give, let me, let me explain something here for you to know. When you see anywhere where the Bible says poor, for example, blessed are the poor in spirit. Oh. He's talking about meekness. He's not talking about poor people. God is more interested in people who are meek, humble. There are a lot of poor people who are arrogant. Poor people who are arrogant. The Bible is not a book that concentrates on the poor poor. It's about those. The gospel itself 
God's relationship, it does not mean that because somebody is poor that that person is closer to God. He has nothing to do with it. So when you see Jesus says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor, to the brokenhearted, to all of that. It's all talking about the meek. Only the meek is God for. You can be poor and go to hell. It doesn't bother God, neither does it bother us. But the people that God is concerned about are the meek. That is where the attraction is, the meek. Those that listen to instruction, accept instruction, and follow the direction, they follow the GPX of God. He is talking about religious people and religious leaders here. In verse number five, who have absolutely nothing <laughs> to do with God, but invaded religion for political purposes and for money and for self-advertisement. They use God and God's name to make money or to become leaders and world rulers. In secret, they don't pray. The model for people in public, what prayer is. But, do they have a relationship with God? No, it's all about this earth. And those are the kinds of people and leaders that Jesus is talking about here. For them, religion is a culture, a tradition, a show. <laughs> it has absolutely nothing to do with bonding with the Father and the King and our leader, the Holy Ghost. It's not a quest for God's righteousness, holiness, power, is not. It's not about being made into the likeness of the Father or of Jesus or being elevated, exalted by the Holy Ghost. In fact, this kind of this kind of people they hate God, they don't like Him. They hate the Holy Ghost, they hate Jesus. Why? Because the real demand of God is so simple. And these kinds of people, their desire is to make life complicated through religion. Instead of making God fun, they make God to become fear. Either God is fun, to be with and to worship and to serve or God is something not even a being is something for you to be afraid of any relationship with God that create fear is not of him hallelujah and so Jesus says that these kinds of people they have already receive their reward. And when you come into contact with these kinds of people, religion is very legalistic. It's a legalistic approach to God. Their relationship with other human beings is control and demand. And a lot of religions are like this.
Look at what he said here. Verse number six. But thou, when thou prayest, let's see what it says here. When thou prayest, enter into thy uh, closet. <sighs> and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father which is uh, which is in secret pray to thy father which is in secret and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly did you hear that some of the deep prayers some of the Wonderful encounter experiences you will have with God will happen when you are doing it only with Him, not with anybody. There is a place for public worship and for somebody to lead sometimes in public worship to lead all of us to participate. Every public worship is not a one-man show. Every public worship is not a one-man show. I am completely against going to church and one person stand there, pray, some choir stand there and sing. No, I'm against it. There is a place for choir to sing. There is a place for one person to lead in prayer. But 90% of the rest of the time, everybody should sing together Everybody should stand up and pray together. That's why when you read the Psalms and all the books of worship of the Bible, you will always see a refrain. Oh, the Lord opened the Red Sea and everybody will go. One person will chant the different power acts of God and the rest of the congregation will shout for his mercy endure it forever participation is what participation is what prayer and worship is about it's not a one man show people come there and sit back and the pastor does the job or the choir and get paid and everybody goes away and get nothing real prayer real worship in public it's not a show for the hypocrites. I will be, I will, I will want to go as far as telling you this. 90% of the time, the power to work miracles, the power to heal, the power to cast out demons is not in the pulpit. It's not in the altar either. I think it's about time that we return back to how it used to be from the days of old in the New Testament to how it used to be uh, in the New Testament, from the Old Testament to the New Testament. The Spirit of God can take over anybody. If you look at the Old Testament, it was not always the king, the priests, the Levites. The Spirit of God can take over anybody, can enter anybody, take over anybody. And anybody can minister, can prophesy. I want to see each of the congregations that we will eventually establish or ministry centers. I want to see in every congregation all the gift is in operation, not in one person. And I will put in their place Every human being who will come to us to come and look for power or for control of our money will put them in their place. And if they want to leave, let them leave. Because they are human beings who are very thirsty and greedy and looking for some way where they will be in charge and destroy everybody else. And 
that is why a group of people will come into a place and they will make sure that other group of people do not come in there. And that is very wrong. Grow, they do not grow. Die, they do not die. And the entire thing is nothing. Get away, they do not get away. <laughs> and I know of different cultures like that. It's not fair. There are two approaches to God, public and private. And if all you do with God is public, then there's a problem. Because if God wants to do something big on the earth, it happens in the private with one single human being. It's only in rare instances, rare places in the Bible, you see God coming to do things with the entire crowd. But whenever God want, wants to make a journey, a shift in human history, when a new epoch, E-P-O-C-H, when, when, uh, when there is about to be a new paradigm shift in human history, I'm talking of physical history. Number one, the Holy Ghost will be present. And number two, one woman or one man is going to be the vessel, the tool for that. It's not normally two people. Go and look through the Bible. Every encounter that resulted in a new movement is always with one person. God spoke to Abraham, not Sarah. God spoke to Rebecca, not Isaac. You go and read the Bible, you see it. Rebecca is the one who went to go and find out from God. Why is she having problem in this, in this uh, pregnancy that she's having and she went and they told her there are two people in your womb they are two different people they are two different nations the younger will be the one that will be leading the 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 older the younger will carry the anointing so when when pastors accuse jacob of, of going to steal esau's blessing be careful because you don't know what you're talking about Rebecca is the one that God spoke to. God didn't speak to Isaac about it. So always one person who get it. That's why when Isaac wanted, wanted to pass the anointing, the blessing that his father passed to him, to one of the kids, he has to go by tradition. And by tradition, Esau is the firstborn. Esau is the one who is going to inherit the anointing. The leadership of the family, both physically and supernaturally. But Rebecca remembered what God told her about the, the babies. That's why Rebecca did what she did in order to get it for Jacob. Because if the anointing fell into the hand of Esau, it would have been terrible. The bloodline would have been tainted with so much evil. Always one person will know. Because God deals with us. The biggest powers of God is released to us as individuals. Before it trickles down to the entire group. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shut the door. 
there is a place for you to go and consult your God. Because God is the public God, but also God is a secret God. There is a side of God that is secret. The secrets of God many a times will not be revealed to us in the public. The secrecy of God are revealed to us when we are with him in our secrets, in our bedrooms. Let me share something that you need to know this morning and then we will stop here. Make sure that your bedroom has also a small place for prayer, a small altar. My bedroom has an altar. My office has an altar. And there is a bigger altar in the living room. Some, some, somewhere when we move from here to our main headquarter, I will have a place erected for people who are dear to me who have gone to be with the Lord. Everyone will have their pictures in one spot and there will be an altar for those people. And that is where if you don't have a place in your house to remember the saints in your family, you send their pictures, a large portrait of them, we will display them there. There will always be incense, sweet incense around there. And can people can come there to pray. I want to have a picture of my father, my earthly father there. Because we make so we make a whole thing. We make too much about people dying. And after a few months, we forget about them. Not me. The reason is that those people, they didn't die. If God wants those who have gone by, those who have already gone ahead of us to appear to you, they will. Amen. And some of us are so afraid of those things. Is that not devil? Is that not witchcraft? Was Jesus practicing witchcraft when Moses and Elijah appeared to him? Was that witchcraft? No. Let me tell you, those who have gone can come physically. It's easier for you to appear physically when you are a full-blown spirit. I've seen people who have died and gone to be with their Lord. If people in hell can appear physically, what about people in heaven? If a witch, a little old witch, can call Samuel the prophet out from where he was waiting for Jesus to come, a witch can call him to, to can call him to come out, to come and talk to King Saul. Whom, whom he was quarreling with till he died. Say, come back and finish the quarrel. The politics has not yet ended. Let me share with you what is going to happen this afternoon. If you didn't know, no. But there are things that I want you to know. All the fathers of the United States of America, whether they're in heaven or on, in hell, I'm going to summon each of them to a meeting today. All the founding fathers of the United States, I'm going to summon them all to a meeting. If you want me to change, yeah, if you want me to change your country, you don't like the government, call me, pay me, I will do it. And something will happen. Both angels and evil spirit will be called to go to work. You say, evil spirits? Are you serious? It's because you don't understand how God works. You think that God is stupid not to have killed all the fallen angels and all the demons? You don't know that part of the reason God kept them there is for them to be a set up against us humans. And us is set up against them. They hate us. We hate them. We don't like them. They don't like us. They, they, they claim that we got everything. We got God. They got nothing. So every little opportunity that God has a job for them, they run into it. Let me tell you how devil operate. 
the same devil who came and told the men of Shechem in the house of Balberet. They took the money of the devil and gave to Abimelech and made him to go and kill 70 of his own father's sons. Go and read the curse of Jotham. I have put a curse on America and I've also put a blessing on America about the election of last year. And we are going to see how that blessing and curse will work out. The Bible says that when Jotham spoke until a human being pronounces the curse or the blessing, God doesn't act. He's waiting and that's why we did what we did on the 20th of August, 2017. God depends on a human being to carry out certain assignments on the earth, then God comes in to act. That's why Jesus became a human being. And in that story, Judges chapter 9, the Bible clearly states what that means. It says, and an evil spirit from the Lord came between the people of Shechem, the Israelites, and their leader, and Abimelech. And Abimelech destroyed them, and they destroyed Abimelech. And they, they killed each other. He killed many of them, and then they turn around and they kill him. Go and read about Ahab. It's all connected with Baal. The God with a thousand faces. Just as Jesus can appear in different formats. As an ancient of days, he has white beard, white long hair, glistening. When he appears to you as the ancient of days. As the son of the father glorified. Always with the father forever. That's how you see Jesus. If he appears to you as the son of man. He wears a simple white gown. A Roman sandals. A brown hair. And a a small brown beard, a long brown hair that goes back to his back. He's still the same Jesus. And the devil also went and created one of his fallen angel to be like Jesus. And that is the person we call Baal. Baal is not Lucifer. Is the next to him. And everywhere you see strong practice of witchcraft, he's there. That's why there is no culture that is not tainted with blood and manipulation and witchcraft and the occult. Every culture you go to, it is there. Why? It's because of Baal. And everywhere you hear of God sending an evil spirit to a human being is always connected with Baal, Jezebel, Ahab, Abimelech, Balberet. And people have not asked why. And when you hear where you also hear this, this as, there's a third place where you hear of God sending an evil spirit to destroy somebody. Whenever you hear of God sending an evil spirit towards a human being on the earth, it is either to make that person a lunatic, to make that person lose their mind, and that will lead to their death, or to make that person, or to create a situation in which eventually that person is leaving the earth. Anytime you hear that an evil spirit from the Lord come upon a human being, it means that person, it has been signed into law that that person is going to die and live the earth.
and each of many a times evil people, God will allow an evil man or woman to become a leader of a nation or a governor or somebody very prominent in order to destroy the person publicly, not quietly. That's a big drama. Every evil person will be destroyed by God publicly, not, not secretly. Saul, the first king of Israel, had the anointing from Samuel. Later we heard that God recalled the anointing. And what, do we, what did we find? An evil spirit from the Lord came upon him. That's how David was hired to play, to play holy music to calm him down. He became a lunatic. So three, three, three different rulers, three kings, all of them received the, the gift of an evil spirit. They received a ghost. And when you hear that God sent an evil spirit towards a human being. It means that, let me let me discuss that really very quickly before we leave here this morning. It means that God called a meeting of the sons of God because that's how it's that's how it is done. You need to watch it in heaven. You need to watch how that takes place. Nobody who is a prominent person who have become arrogant and worked their mouth against against immigrants, against divided a country, start killing people, destroying families, greedy for money, power, controlling people. Just wait and see. Normally, somebody from the earth will ask God for a meeting. God will call a meeting of all the angels. Good, bad, and ugly. All of them are invited to that meeting. There are different kinds of meetings. There are meetings that only good angels come. There are meetings that God invites all. Because remember that Lucifer and his host still call themselves sons of God. Because they still claim that they were made by God even if they are not in alliance with God. They don't like God, but they still claim and still boast that they are part of God. Because he made them in the first place. But he didn't make them bad, he made them good. So there is a meeting that is for all to come. And whenever such a meeting is called, it is for God to ask the other side to give him an idea. How am I going to remove such and so person on the earth from being a leader of our business, a leader, of our state, a county, a mayor, a chief of police, somebody in the White House, or somebody in the White House of your country, a president, a king, how do we get rid of this person? God always have that meeting. The reason why is for legal purposes. Everything is governed by laws. And normally for such, for such a job, he uses the fallen angels and uh, and demons, he uses them. So the very devil that is raising those bad people, the very devil that is raising and telling those bad people to do bad things, will be the very devil that God will ask to go and slay that person. And the devil will go and slay. So you see, there are two, they, they, they have no, they have no, um, what do we call it? They have no, um, so that's why I say to people, don't go to witches, don't go to astrologers, don't go to all these occultic people. The reason is that they trust nobody, they don't believe in you, they don't like you, they can switch side very easily. No loyalty. No, no, yes, no loyalty. They don't have any loyalty. They don't have passion. No, no passion. So even if you go to them, and they make things for you to open doors for you, God can t tell them, I want you guys to kill that person. And immediately they switch side and they'll come and kill you. Even if yesterday they were with you. They ate with you yesterday, but today they can turn against you and kill you. 
And that is why I ask you to make good use of the broadcast <laughs> that we have in the in the in in my channel in the internet that talks about what was the broadcast we did last week or week before last about um, return to sender, the prayers to return to sender. When you cast a demon out that was sent to you, or you discover that an evil spirit was sent to you. Don't just send them back to the sender. Make sure you send them back to the sender to do to the sender what the sender asks that power to come and do to you. If they ask that demon to come and slay you in your sleep, ask that demon to go and slay that person while that person is sleeping. So that they don't wake. When they wake up, they are somewhere else. You guys do not know why people who practice the occult and people who practice witchcraft don't like me. I'll tell you one of the reasons. It is this reason. I saw an oath and I said this. If any witch leaves their body and fly out with their spirit to go and do things out there and I catch them, I will never allow them to enter back into their physical body. That's the way I operate. Now you know my secret. If any occultists leave their physical body and they leave and their spirit leaves their body for them to go and operate somewhere, I will stop them from entering into their body. So they will stand far away and watch their body, but they cannot enter into it because I will come between them and their physical body. And I will be singing that song for them. How do they sing that song? Another one bite the dust. Boom, 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 boom. Another one bite the dust. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> yep. And when I sing, and when I sing it, and I will dance. Another one bite the dust. Boom, 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 boom. Another one bite the dust. Boom, boom. <laughs> <laughs> one one gone, one more. So when the when the rest will announce, when the rest will cry out from hell that it is in the time Mary, oh boy, they hate me. They don't like me. Not just that I did it, but I'm singing, I'm rubbing it in on them. Another one by the dust. Boom 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 boom. Next. And after that you hear me say next. And now it's going to even be very, very bad for, for wicked people and witches and the occult. It's going to be bad for them because our oil will begin to go throughout the entire world. Today, yeah, our oil destroy witchcraft powerful anointing oil is just a hundred dollars. Now we'll send it to you. It's going to be in homes. Please buy the many and send to your friend, to your families. And let's get that sucker out of our families and lives. Yeah. And then there is another one called Business Class Angels Eyes. And that one covers everything. That is for those who want to make money. Business people. It's a five hundred dollar worth of oil because of the work that goes into it. <sighs> and that one is followed by a specific angel tailored towards you. Doesn't mean that because this other group are using these things for evil that we should forget about what belongs to us. We want God to reward us openly. If you want to hear big things concerning your life, begin to spend time to be in the presence of the living God and tell him what is it that you want me to know. And God will begin to talk to you. God is waiting for public relationship with you and private relationship with you. I have told every one of you, I don't I do not know whether I, those of you who've been following my ministry, there are not many of you who have followed me for um who followed me except someone like Geneva and Ladri Kemleda and the rest. 
those who followed since 2012, and especially 2013, you've heard this story. When I was sleeping, these are, these are practical things, I was sleeping, and a cat, a firefly came into the room where, where I was sleeping, and there was another guy sleeping at the other side of the room. And a firefly came into the house and turned into a cat, a very big white cat. And suddenly a light appeared from nowhere. It was fun to watch. That's how I began to know how the power of God is exercised, how the power of God act. I didn't pray. Those things happen of their own because you belong to God, you belong to Jesus. It's automatically turned on. It's not something that happened because you are fasting, you are praying, you are paying tight, you are doing no, no. It's automatic, it just turned itself on, bang. And I saw a light came down from the sky and separated that guy who is sleeping at the other side and the, and the cat from me. And where I am was covered with a big cloud of light. You can hardly see me. And I was watching what was happening. And then I woke up. That's when I realized it wasn't a dream, it was real. The entire side that I was sitting was covered with pure white fluorescent light. Just shoot everywhere. And I'm watching and I see, I'm sitting up in bed and I'm watching. And the cat had very long claws. That's how I knew, that's how vampires are. And he was scratching the guy's back and hands and leaving very long claws and was licking the blood. He was scratching. This is physical. This is not dream. And, so, and suddenly something told the cat that somebody is watching him because it was a him, not a her. And the cat turned around and saw me. Oh my gosh. He looked at me and he took off and I stood up and chased him. The light parted for me to go, to go through the light and by the door, he right before my face, a cat, a tall cat like a human being, but a cat, tall, turned back into a firefly, busted out of the door, the door is closed. Of course, I know that in the world of the supernatural, there's no door. Even though we think we are living in houses, there's no houses anywhere. He busted out through the door, turned back into a human being. And I am inside the house, but I'm watching him outside. And then I saw who he was. It was the witch doctor that lived downstairs. And I saw him running down the steps because it was a story building. And then I heard the door of his house just when BAM! He shut the door. <sighs> there are things that when you see, you say, wow, this is how the world truly is. And this are no joke. I only want to share with the world the things that I've seen physically. You hear me talking about mammoths? I have seen a mammoth physically by the Atlantic Ocean. That's the easiest one anyway. I ask the Almighty God to separate you with the cloud and the fire and the wind. Amen. I am asking God this morning to put between you and the rest a wall of cloud that if anybody tried to get near you, it will be like they bump their head against the mountain. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today be filled with uncommon power. Let those who hate you, let their hatred become a heart attack that kills them. La lobo se kande la sa kayande. E manto la kuyasi kayande. O la kunda la sante. Bo kanto la su kandele. Mo kato kanta la santa. E balu kande le se kayandi. Manta kalu. Father, in the name of Jesus, give your people a great harvest today. Today is a day of happiness and success. Everything your people do, success comes of its own. Lord, give us success from the throne. Give us money from the throne. Amen. Give us opportunities from the throne. Amen. And Lord, let our life be a frustration for our enemies. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let the anointing upon our heads be so strong that if people come near us, they come under an electricity that they don't know where it's coming from. There is a healing that is happening to some people. There are some people on the conference line and those watching this broadcast right now. You are coming under very heavy anointing. There is a healing, healing virtue has gone forth to heal people this morning. People have been healed. God is touching people and overcoming nature. Because of your age, you've started to grow sick, you started to grow old, and God is overcoming nature. He's overcoming the laws of the universe for you. I want you to ask God to break the laws that are keeping you from your success, keeping you from your health. Father, in the name of Jesus, break the laws. Break the laws of the universe. Break the laws of of states break the laws of nations laws that has been put to stop people from their progress laws that have been put out there by sin and by satan to stop our finances our health our happiness break those laws for us break those laws break the laws Break the laws that are stopping us from having the fullness of every good thing. Break the laws. Break the laws of the universe. Even though you put them in place, therefore you can twist them to our advantage. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, Lord. Break the laws that are keeping people from mental sickness. Break the law that are making people to be sick. Amen. Any sin that has been committed by anybody and the laws of sin has fastened itself and making good things not to happen. Lord, we break those laws. We break those laws with the blood of Jesus. Any carelessness, any carelessness, any effect 
and consequences of what people have done against us. And the laws of Satan has begun to work against us. We break those laws and we destroy them. The laws of finances that has put your people in debt, we break those laws. In the name of Jesus, we break those laws. Every choices that we have made that are contrary to what will make us happy, we break the laws behind them. Hallelujah! This morning we walk. We will do things today with so much of your holiness and power. Let your fruits, let your gift work on us. Lord, fill us with your own kind of glory and kind of happiness. We destroy the spirit of deception and manipulation. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for giving us victory today. Thank you, Lord. There is somebody you are going, there is a call you've been expecting. Is a call to settle an issue. There is some money you've been expecting. It's going to come today. Amen. There is somebody who is going to win a very big sum of money. Wow. Amen. Don't forget yeah. that I'm here. Don't forget I'm here waiting for the tithe and the offering. I need to go shopping. I need... I need to go shopping for new new things for my life. So I'm depending on that money. Hallelujah. I see a woman. You have been given a brand new car. Let me tell you how the car is. It's a, it's a sports car. And there is nobody who will see you driving that car. Who will not believe that either you are a pimp. Or a drug dealer. Because the car is too nice. People like you were not supposed to drive such a car. You were supposed to be driving. You were supposed to be driving some Bukuru Bukuru car. <laughs> and because you got the car. Thank God that is because of that car. What I've been talking about. I've been, I've been talking to you, this particular woman. I have been talking on my broadcast. Go and get your hair done. And you are like, who do I do my hair from? Hey. Why do I need to do my nails? Why do I need to do my hair? And because you suddenly, you got a new sports car. You went and you got your hair done. Got your nails done. And now, you are now a sexy mama. Look at you. Look at you. Sexy mama. <laughs> oh, sexy. I'll, I'll be singing. I'll be singing for this person because I can't wait to, to receive this phone call that it is me. I got a car and I'll be singing for you. Oh, sexy mama. I like your style. Your body's moving from side to side. Oh, you putting on us. We lost control. Whoa, 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 whoa. I can go on. I mean, I cannot wait to see you call me and tell me about this brand new beautiful car. Yes, 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 yes. There is somebody that is asking God for an SUV, a big SUV, because you have, you have many kids, you have many children, you are asking for an SUV, and I see this big fat, big fat butt uh, SUV, it's big. And that is what you have been given. It's a big, it's a big, big SUV. It's very huge. Geneva, you remember the kind of SUV that I showed you once in Vegas? 
and you told me that you are too small to drive that one. You remember? Yeah. You say you don't want that one. It's like either a Tahoe or what do we call the other one? It's either a Ford GMC, Ford and GMC, they make those big, those big SUVs. And God is giving you that car because of the children, because you can put all their playthings, you can put bicycle, you guys can travel. So that's why God is giving it to you. And the one I see, yeah, the one I see is like a, it's like a green, a green, a green, um, gray color. It's huge. So that's the car that has been given to the person. There is also another person that I'm seeing this morning. You finally taken your seats in your office. You are no longer working as um, somebody in the in the in the in the in, in where you work. That is, you are in the public side. You finally have an office. You are working inside an office. You are answering phone calls. You are writing things, and you also have a secretary. I have finally seen you. You are now sitting at your seats. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for miracles. There is a man that is going to approach a younger woman. There's a younger woman in our midst. You are in Europe. You have a big hair. I don't know who you are. Even, and even if I know, I'll pretend like I don't. A man is going to approach you and will make you an offer. And so you are going to choose between being a full-time housewife and married to a multimillionaire. And the reason why God is making this offer to you is because that's the kind of thing that you want. That's number one. Number two, either it is that, and even if you are going to be a full-time housewife, you are going to be asked to be in charge of the bookwork. Because money is involved. So they're going to ask for your hand in relationship. But this person is very, very wealthy. So you are not going to call me to tell me whether you should accept or not. I've already I told you to carry on. I'm using Rosalind's language. Carry on. So that girl is to say yes, because it is God that is sending that man, not the devil. Your life is going to change in one single day. That person has been observing you for a while. He has been observing you for a while, and he's going to ask you. All right, that is where we stop. I will see all of you at 12 noon, which is 1 o'clock Eastern, for our prosperity uh, prosperity prayer. Do not forget to contribute to our ministry. And I want to thank you very much for joining me during this morning prayer. So I will see you at 12 noon, and that will be the end of the ministrations for today. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Uh, can I speak to you, please? You have to call me. You have to call me in the office phone. This is the public. This is the public phone. You have. This is the. Okay. This is the number you are to call me. Give it like ten minutes after this conference. You call three one six. You ready? Geneva, give her that number. All right. Thank you, everybody. You have a very blessed day and a very happy day. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Yeah.